It's tabletop time. I'm Dave, and today I'm going to be painting a 75mm miniature in a monochrome style. And the miniature in question is actually part of Miniac's new Kickstarter. Scott from Miniac is doing an amazing Kickstarter and is the sponsor of this video. And I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that in just a minute. But first, I thought I'd give you an idea of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Now, while predominantly I paint wargaming miniatures, every now and then I find a beautiful sculpt and tackle it in terms of a 75mm figure, maybe a 1 to 35 tank scale model figure, something like that. And the reason for this is I see these as fantastic opportunities to push my understanding of painting and learn new techniques. I'm still learning it. I mean, I think we're all still learning somewhere on the journey. And painting these kinds of models is a great way for me to, well, learn new things without feeling like I need to match the style of my existing army. So we've had this monochrome paint set from Scale 75 at the studio for a long time. And I've always been tempted to use it, but never had the right model. And with these new models from the Kickstarter, I think I found it. So I'm going to settle in and tackle a more relaxed and in-depth painting process of how I, at my current level of miniature painting, try to attend something that is ambitious to say the least. But hey, maybe you can learn something too along the way. With the models from Miniac's new Kickstarter in hand, I had to choose which one to paint. And while all three are gorgeous sculpts, I had an image for painting this monochrome model and then adding a beautiful spot of red to draw the eye. And the warrior who was licking his blade lended perfectly to that. Assembling him was a breeze. The resin pieces glued together with minimum mold lines and near perfect fits. It was a really nice experience to work with a resin model that didn't just require a hacksaw and a drill to get to glue together, which has been my experience from uh, a certain other large resin producing company. First thing I did was immediately prime the model white. I wasn't really sure what I was doing as painting in monochrome was a complete first time experience for me. So I just tried to apply my technical application of paint and blending with the suggestions they used in the booklet, starting by adding some shade tones into the recesses. So I focused my attention on the abs of this warrior. This area of the model was very pronounced with lots of muscle groups and it was easy to find definition and sort of practice my technique for how I was going to do this effect. As I continued to build up color, I added some of the darker grays and rapidly began to ask myself, wait a minute, isn't this a black and white painting set? This is looking awfully brown. Maybe it's just like an old TV painting set. But I decided I would persevere at this stage and continue to see past the ugly phase and get to the final result. I took a moment to look at the cover of the black and white paint set and could see that there were definitely brown and green tones in the paint set. So I realized it was more about capturing the feeling of monochrome rather other than necessarily using strictly black and white. The challenge for me here was to use this paint set to try a completely different visual style of painting. It wasn't to necessarily restrict myself in any way in terms of colors. After all, I'm going for a mood here. I'm not going for a painting challenge. After I'd established these moody browns in the recesses, it was time to bring in some of the grays as per the painting instructions. And at this stage, I started to get really w worried um, this is a hell of an ugly phase. And I've got to confess, I'm feeling pretty nervous in this video. The fact that Miniac's sponsoring this with his new Kickstarter is awesome. And it means I know he's definitely going to watch it. And as someone whose videos I've watched for many, many years and who I've steered customers towards for advice on painting, it's kind of nerve wracking to know that he's going to be looking at my amateurish hacking at this black and white. I've kind of got to get past that, right? Everything's got an ugly phase, so it's time to press on. I immediately started to blend this in. I was not happy with the look, so I began to bring in some reflective underlights in the flesh and then also some highlights on the upper areas. Working back and forth, adding in harsh terminator lines underneath and softly blended highlights, we eventually reached the point where I realized I had accidentally just painted a Dunma from the Elder Scrolls. I've been playing too much Morrowind lately. Extremely unhappy with how it looked, I heavy handedly came in with a far paler highlight and repainted some areas as a test. And then as many of you might've done before, I got really frustrated. So do you ever just, uh, do you ever just paint an awesome model and feel like you're not doing it justice? Get really frustrated and feel down on yourself and kind of hate what you're doing? That was me. Uh, that was me at this stage. I've been working with this paint set and I was super unhappy with the results. I felt like I'd been following the tutorial, but it felt very much like that meme of how to draw an owl, step one. 
Draw a line. Step two, finish the owl. I just felt like I was not equipped for what I was meant to be working with. So what do you do in that situation? When you've got this sweet model, you don't want to ruin it and you're not happy with what you've been painting. Well, when the ugly phase hits hard, I think there's three real approaches you can take. You can either give up, walk away and not touch it again, which is probably not my favorite choice. You can strip it back and repaint it. Well, the third phase is move on to different areas of the model, give up on the part that's causing you frustration and get your enjoyment back in the painting process. That's exactly what I did. And it's what I'd encourage you to do out there. If you reach a brick wall when you're painting a miniature in a particular area, move on to another part of the miniature. Find something else that you can paint. Get your confidence back. Unshake and unrattle yourself. And hopefully when you've done that, you'll be able to return with fresh eyes to the area you weren't happy with and work out how to fix it. So that was exactly what I did. Thank you, Dave, for your sage wisdom. It is time to paint something else. Paint something more normally. And you know, to be honest, I noticed here, I started to lean into my old way of painting. I was subconsciously abandoning the idea of painting this whole thing black and white, using the heavier browns to paint brown areas and the different tones in the kit to pick out different areas. The khaki colored or bone colored pants were a massive standout in this regard. At the time of painting, I didn't really think about it. I, in my head, was establishing the base tones that I'd then make monochrome later. But really what had happened was I had fallen back into painting something in a way I was familiar with painting it. Because again, I wanted to make this model look sweet and I wasn't confident I could do it by painting it the way I had originally set out to do it. But with that considered, I still went ahead and painted all those areas and started to get my mojo back. All right, now that I've settled into painting the figure, I think it's time I talk about Scott's new Kickstarter. Now the core of the Kickstarter is two main components. A brush coffin, a very stylized and cool brush box designed by Scott himself that is perfect for carrying and storing your favorite sets of paintbrush paintbrush. Now as standard, it comes with eight brush slots, but also has a compartment for you to put anything you want really, maybe your favorite tools, but it can also store four to six more brushes. It has a metal exterior and a fine foam finish to protect those brushes as you take them to the game store. Ooh, very nice. So the miniatures in the campaign are 75 millimeter resin cast minis. There are three gorgeous designs available, the witch, the ranger, and the warrior. These three models are wood elves, but with a twist. They're dark, horrible, exiled wood elves. Scott's put together some lore for it and I absolutely love his enthusiasm and how he's sharing something that's clearly important to him. There are also three amazing painting course masterclasses available that will teach you so much about how to take your painting to the next level. Make sure you get in while the Kickstarter is running and make your pledge as soon as possible. It's running between February 25th and March 21st. Afterwards, there'll be a pledge manager for any kind of add-ons and things like that. And of course, shipping will be worldwide. Links are in the description and send some love from Tabletop Time. Thank you for watching and let's get back to painting that awesome warrior. With the leathers and fabrics on this model, starting with the pants, I actually did the highlights after a shade. I went into the lower recesses, the areas that the light would be obscured by the fabric, and I painted in progressively darker tones of brown, drawing quite a harsh, darker terminator line in the areas of deep shadow. From above, I used a choppy textured highlighting technique to pick out the areas on the fabric and then a more dash or line focus technique for the leather boots and belts. On the cloth wraps that were around the model's arm and also around his boots, I decided to use some of the green gray to bring in the shadows in those areas. Another way to differentiate the fabric from the boots in a very limited palette of paints. With the black leather wraps around the waist, I decided to lean towards my cross hatch stippling technique that I've used in the past. And something I added this time with the larger surface area was some creases and indentations and little hatches off the highlighted areas where the leather had been 
been distressed or damaged in the past and this area was catching light. As I moved to the shrunken heads on the back of the model, I thought of the shrunken heads I'd seen in movies. I must confess I haven't seen shrunken heads in real life, but I have in Indiana Jones. When I've seen them, they've been fairly dark, shriveled affairs. Almost like the way I think of Draugr's skin in games like Skyrim, where it becomes that sort of ash gray looking, very withered, horrible looking flesh. And with that in mind, I chose to use these ashy colors to paint the faces of these shrunken heads. It was in picking out the details here that I realized just how sad they look. It's kind of horrible. As I looked at their cheek, uh, cute full cheeks, kind of had a worried feeling that these shrunken heads might actually be baby's heads. Scott, they're, they're shrunken heads, right? They're not baby's heads, right? Please tell me they're not baby's heads. <laughs> All right, the details were painted. It was time to come back and look at the skin that had been bothering me for so long. I abandoned the guide in the black and white paint set and I just sort of thought about skin. I asked Murray for some advice and I looked at a few references of shirtless dudes in black and white. And then I looked at more references of shirtless dudes in black and white. And then I got back to painting. And one of the things I noticed was that I just wasn't happy with the color choices. There was way too much brown warmth in the torso and in general in the model as I'd painted it. It was at this stage of painting that I fully came to the realization that I hadn't stood true to my original goal. So it was here that I tried to bring it back. Painting with a lot more gray, I set a whole new foundational undertone. I did leave a tiny bit of that brown in those recesses just as an undertone to give a little bit of human fleshy warmth, but I focused on repainting the warrior and bringing up to much brighter highlights in general areas, starting from a far more monochrome gray. Very quickly, I became much more happy with the result. I think if we can see a side by side, you'll see it's a stark improvement. It looks a lot more black and white and a lot more evocative, even if it isn't black and white. So once I'd made sure to keep the skin shaded in the dark areas and brought up to much brighter and larger highlights, I moved on to a non-metallic metal effect for his armor and his blades. I won't go into too much detail about how I painted the non-metallic metal here because there are other people who can do it better. There is a non-metallic metal video on our channel that is very appropriate to beginners. But if you're past that beginner stage, there is an amazing video on Miniac's channel on how to paint non-metallic metal that includes gorgeous lower reflections. And that was something I was way too afraid to do on this model. I felt that if I tried to incorporate ground reflections, it'd be too hard for me to make it feel monochrome. So I kept it more painterly and a little bit more to the theme of just flat black and white and stylized. I will throw in here another one. There is a great miniature painting video on how to paint Darren Latham style by Yuan Hidalgo Miniatures. It's super interesting to see all the different ways you can do non-metallic metal. And if you are into in-depth painting tutorials by incredible painters, go check out some of these other channels because there is some awesome content there. But I know you're here for my nonsense, so I'm just gonna continue. My brief overview of my non-metallic metal is I just wanted to keep it really evocative. Punch the contrast in the recesses, punch the highlights, get some nice flowing areas. It would really create a deep comparison comparison using the same colors as were highlighted on the arm sleeve and the hair, but just showing how the way you highlight and texturize can completely change the way you look at the model. Moving on to the model's finishing touches, I had to paint his hair. Now, hair is something where Emil or Squidma has a really cool tutorial on an interesting way to paint hair on miniatures, which I've enjoyed very much and have been trying to get right. And I think I've done a pretty good job of that on 32 mil scale miniatures, but painting it on this larger miniature, I have to admit this was one of the areas of the model I wasn't nearly as happy with my paint job. I think it's okay, but I definitely think it could be much better. And I look forward to practicing more in the future. With this done, I carefully applied some blood technical effects. I wanted red to be a little spot color, maybe a little homage towards things like Sin City and just to evoke a bit of a vibe of danger and violence. And I think it did all right. I have to confess here, I was tempted to spray blood all over it with a toothbrush, flicking it everywhere, but I got a little bit scared. I didn't want to wreck the model and I chickened out, leaving the model just with the hand applied blood, which 
honestly, probably be a little bit more excessive. And this stage, the model was almost done, but there was one thing that was eating at me. It was those pants. And so it was time to really learn something new. I've said before that I feel that I'm quite a decent painter. I would say I'm a high tabletop standard painter, but my style is very much Citadel and it's learned in the same way that I'm sure a lot of you out there who paint minis learnt your painting. I don't have an art background. I have a mini collecting and playing background. So fundamental stuff like color theory, uh, things I need to learn. And it was time to learn that. So I did some reading and I looked into color theory and realized that if you use the opposite color on the color wheel, you can actually basically turn colors into gray. As a first experiment on that, I made some blue purple glazes and began the process of doing five or six glazes on the trousers to really bring down the color saturation. And at the end of the day, I was really happy with the result. I will say it didn't quite work perfectly because in the areas that I had highlighted up to a more white color, that blue tone tinted the white to become more blue. But the deeper areas that had originally been quite a bold khaki color, they actually neutralized really well and came a lot closer to a desaturated gray, making overall the total vibe of this model a lot closer to the monochrome that I was originally trying to achieve. So I hope you liked the final result. This was certainly an experiment for me and something I was eager to try. And while we check out my model and you can scrutinize the finished results, I'd like to say thank you to our patrons, including those who've joined us recently. So thank you, Nicholas Long, Nathaniel A. Ratcliffe, Nate Harding, Pastel Miniatures, Owen Harrison, Thydekar, and Tub. Welcome to the gang. I hope to see you in our patron discord and maybe submitting to the mini review, which we've just filmed in the studio today actually. So here he is, all finished, my little Alf. My Alf. And I have to say, even with the trials and tribulations, I was super glad that I tackled this experiment. He's not quite black and white. I mean, definitely in the pants and the shoes, there's a lot of browns going on, a lot of greens, but overall I dig the really muted color tone. It looks like a horror film or something that's come out of the night, which I think is pretty cool for Miniac's original intent for these creepy wood elf models. I also feel that it's a really exciting testament to getting better at painting. Two or three years ago, there's no way I could have tackled the non-metallic metal elements of that as quickly or easily. And yeah, I've got heaps to go. I've got plenty to learn and plenty to grow. I'm only just tackling color theory and my non-metallic metal could use some reflections. But that's the awesome part of this painting journey. There's always someone to look up to and there's always awesome new projects to tackle. Thanks to Miniac for sponsoring this video, but not only that, for the years of entertainment you have provided me at my game store and my customers. It's not often you're in a position to say something like that, so hey, why not? Please everyone go and check out this Kickstarter. You can tell Scott has poured a lot of love into it and when these labors of love come up from creators, you just gotta check it out. They're really cool miniatures. I encourage you all to grab these miniatures because there is nothing better than a fresh canvas without any of that baggage of maybe painting your army to grab a new technique, try it, do something new. Have you ever painted non-metallic metal? Maybe you should try that large skin areas lead to new ideas when painting flesh tones. The opportunities are endless. So I can't wait to see what you create with it. I'll be following the Kickstarter closely and I can't wait to see what you all make with the models once you get them in hand. And hey, I look forward to hearing about how smooth that brush coffin is for storing and transporting your brushes. Until the next time, thank you for watching and uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next video. It's gonna be good. It's a lot harder to do awkward endings when you're sincere and also um, don't have anyone to play off. So maybe we just, Billy, just cut back then. Cut the bit before, cut even me saying that.